appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. You hit the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 43. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. My fucking folks all the way from Dallas, Texas with it. Let them know who's in the building today. I'm Kyle. Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. It's Bruce Leroy. Shouts out to my guy, Bruce, making his second appearance on the podcast. Episode 18 yeah. was the first one my man was on. And my man, Bruce, produced a number. Bruce is officially now the number two uh, downloaded podcast uh, episode out of the How to Hustle podcast. So salute okay, to Bruce for producing Bruce. the number. Um, I appreciate it, trying man. To get, right. I've been trying to get Kai and Jay on since I had Bruce on back then. Schedules didn't line up then, but we're going to work the situation out. Uh, so here we go. Episode 43. Let me run through the rundown as always. Uh, cleaning business. H2H Cleaning. That's my cleaning company. Follow that on Instagram at H2H Cleaning. Custom Hustle Jerseys. Custom Hustle Jerseys is my clothing line today. I'm actually wearing one. A little promotional situation. Uh, in and out of the state, in and out of the country. Cost you a little more for your shipping and handling, but that's at Custom Hustle Jerseys on Instagram. Monday, eBlock Radio Network. eBlock Radio Network on Monday, 2 p.m. They run the video on the YouTube channel as well. So if you like the visuals of How to Hustle Podcast, you go to the eBlock Radio Network's YouTube and you get that at 2 p.m. Tuesdays, the GFT Radio Network. Fuck them niggas. They suspended us, GFT. 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. Wednesday duh, is the kickback app. The kickback app that's out of Dallas, Texas. Shout out to my folks. 8 uh, Central Standard Time. And that's a.m. and p.m. My bad. Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com, 12.30. Uh, Fridays, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, I Say Podcast Radio Network. And the THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. on Saturday. I'm trying to line something up for Sunday. Y'all got stations? Let me know. I don't give a fuck what city it's in. I need the West Coast, but I don't care which city it's in. We need something on a Sunday. All right. Y'all ready? <laughs> you ready. Well, you working hard, ain't you? Copy that, bro. I know I throw a lot of that niggas when we start off, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, got a lot going on. Every day and everything is a hustle. You know yeah, I'll be hustle. laughing. Let every, let every single customer know. <laughs> I'll be, but I'll be laughing at work because I'll be listening and I'll be like, all right, I got at least 45 seconds to, for the intro, so let me get situated. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, copy that. You know what I'm saying? Try to let niggas know, man. <laughs> this shit is out there for you to get. All you gotta do is go get it. Yeah, All right, sir. man. Episode 43. Let's go. Unpopular opinions. This is the topic. Which friend is it most important for you to have? And we're gonna start off with the young lady Kai on the situation. Which friend is most important for me? Yeah. Uh, is it the one you need to go party with? Is it the one that's gonna keep it real with you, kicking the ass? It's Who's my diary friend, the one who know all. Okay, now what does that friend bring you though? That friend bring me peace. They know every situation I done been through. I know all their business. I ain't gotta worry about it being out of the streets. That's the one I trust the most. That's why that's the one that's most important to me. Okay, Bruce. Uh I would say the logical one, the most logical, because I can get off the uh, you know, I go off the edge every now and then. But uh it's the one that you can that could respectfully check you, you know what I'm saying? And be like, bro, you fucking up. And vice versa, we could do that to each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the one that you need to hold closest to you. They know where the bodies are buried, like uh, Kai said, and uh, shit, that's that's the one that you can always depend on. Rain, sleet, hail, snow, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, the best one, definitely the one that you can call at three o'clock in the morning and say, I need to ride to Lexington, Kentucky. And they say, why? Just because I need to go. All right, nigga. Got a pen. <laughs> Pop it um, the one I would say is the best friend, uh, the most important friend for you to have is the one that you respect. The one that you respect, you're going to never cross that line to this shit is going to go left. We're never going to have an issue or a problem. We may disagree. You know what I'm saying? That happens just because you had two people who raised differently, got different opinions, value different shit. So it's always going to be like that. But the one who you respect is going to always be a certain level you're never going to take it to. Like you said, you right. tell them the state secrets and you ain't never going to have to worry about You don't have to say to them, don't tell nobody this. It's already, it's already understood know. that it's already understood that this conversation stays here and it is here. This is between us. Yeah. So it has to be that one that you respect the most that uh, 
you put that most the most value in. Now to flip the question, which friend are you? Now throw that to Kyle. I'm that. Uh, I mean, I hold the secrets too. I'm the secret keeper, the gatekeeper, but I'm also the blunt friend. Because I feel like if we friends, we can hold each other accountable for our shit. So I do tell you where I think you fucking up and I try to help you come off that ledge when you up there. I mean, I think I play multiple roles, but for the most part, I think I'm that accountability friend. Throw them out there then. You said I got multiple roles. Throw them out. Like I said, I'm the diary. I have a friend who tell me all their business. I got a friend who called me when shit not right and say, am I wrong? And when they say, am I wrong? Nine times out of 10, they are. And I got to go ahead and let them know why. Because I can see both sides. I don't always just agree with my friends because I don't want them to always agree with me. Uh, the only friend I think that I'm just really not is the gold digging friend and the turn up friend because I'm too laid back. I don't be out on scene like that. <laughs> Bruce. I'm the go-to guy. Uh, I hold all the secrets. I know way too much. And at the same time, I'm the glue guy. I hold everybody together. Everybody collect because we grown. You know, everybody got their own lives and shit going on. Everybody don't fuck with each other all the time, but everybody fuck with me. And I'm able to bring everybody together, you know what I'm saying, and make shit happen. Uh, it's overwhelming at times, you know, because being the go-to guy, you'd be like, damn, who do, who do I go to? Who do you, you know go to? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Right, but, you know, it is what it is. So that's that's the role I play in my circle. Um, I'm similar to Bruce uh, with this situation is where my dad and my uncle, who was like the two heads of the family, kind of they died within a year of each other. So then it became a void of, well, who is everybody going to turn to as far as a male perspective? My mom is still the one that everybody will go to with any fucking thing. I'll call my mom and say, what's my phone number? Like, <laughs> niggas right. will take shit that far. But as far as a guy, I kind of became that guy, even not even being the oldest or nothing. It just kind of became the role that I filled into the family. Uh, and that's kind of the role that, that I always played, like, with a circle is you call me when you really want to know the truth. Because, like Kai said, I'm not the guy that you turn to when you're just looking for a year. Like, you want if you want to just call me and tell me, like, yo, look, I got something I need to get off my chest, that means you don't want my opinion perfectly fine. We can hold this 15-minute conversation where it's just you venting, you getting it off. Sometimes you need to do that, I understand. Um, but if you ask me at the end of that, what you think, then I'm going to really tell you. I'm not going to tell you, like, it sounds like a good idea to go ride past your baby mom's crib and sit outside in the car and wait for her to come out in the morning. That sounds dumb. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not go to jail. <laughs> like, I'm not going to tell you it sounds cool. Let's sit outside the school and go pick your daughter up because she won't let you see her. Again, that's not a good idea. This isn't cool. <laughs> like, But if you don't ask my opinion and it's like, hey, look, I know he ain't going to listen anyway. I know she ain't going to listen anyway because like, we can flip it. Let's not go sit right. outside his house. Cause you waiting for him to come out with the little girl that you seen him texting on Instagram. I mean, like, let's not do that. But if you don't ask my opinion and you just, you saying you just want to get it off, then I'm a great ear. I can listen and I can, all right, that's what you want to do. Like, cause I've learned in a situation where trying to give, trying to tell somebody something and they told me that's my son. I do whatever I want with him. Right. I, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like you shouldn't ask me if you don't right. want me to tell you the truth. Uh, this is one though that I want to throw to Bruce because, like I said, I'm kind of that same guy. Who do you turn to then when you got a problem that you can't figure it out, or do you even have anybody to turn to? I talk to my old lady more because she could see like shit be bothering me. I don't have a poker face, bro. If something wrong, if I stub my toe, I can't play brave. And she gonna be like, "You're gonna see my bottom lip quiver." You know what I'm saying? But it's I talk to her more now because she got on my ass. Uh, a few months ago, you know, like stop, basically like stop trying to be so strong and you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, so now me and her talk more. If not, shit, I talk to my damn self. I'll be in the car to have a conversation with myself, you know what I'm saying? All right, like, to be the realest nigga you know. You know, that's how we got to do sometimes. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, that's that's what I do, you know. I talk to her now more because they, 
technically they say your 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 second your significant other or your other half is supposed to be your best friend. So you gotta let her uh, in. Uh, um, That's what they say. say. I mean, they say a lot of shit, uh, but we gonna dive into something <laughs> that they told you when you was a child that came from that came from the unpopular opinions. Uh, those in those interviews that y'all did, but you know, stay tuned. We getting there. <laughs> I just like uh, my wife. We was best friends before, like we got married. Like legitimately, I need somebody to come wait for the cable guy. I gotta go to work. She'll sit here. <clears throat> Excuse me for the two hours to wait for. Him. Uh, I need somebody to help me carry this couch. And niggas is bullshit. And she'll help me carry this couch. So I will always say that she was my best friend before we got married. Once we got married, you can't be my best friend because sometimes the problem is you. Sometimes the problem is me. Now, you don't take your marital situations to other people, but at the same time, you can't talk to her about a problem that's her if y'all not ready to have that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I, at the same time, though, you have to, you know what I'm saying? Because right. it, okay, it's, I mean, a, it's, it's the same situation with your friend, you know what I'm saying? If you, like, I had a situation where my partner was fucking up, and he tried to put it on us, like, oh, we wasn't doing, he was like, no, nigga, you gotta start with yourself. You was fucking up, and we here helping you out or trying to get, see, get to the bottom of the shit. You know what I'm saying? All right, now, see, look, don't lose me. Why I said this because you have to be ready to have that conversation. It's one thing you never want to do is come from a place of too much emotion. If y'all both coming from a place of too much emotion where this is too raw for us to talk about right now, once you say this shit is sad, you can't take it back. You know what I'm saying? Once you cross that line, like I said, there's a certain line of respect that you have to have where if you cross that line of respect, there ain't no going back on it. You can apologize, right. say you're sorry, and we're going to act like we moved on from it. But at the end of the day, she's always going to remember that you said this, or he's going to remember that she said that. That's why I said you got to be ready to have that conversation. And sometimes we ain't ready to get there yet. Let yeah, but get if it's two- said, now we got to talk about it. Maybe not today. Said- Some shit, though, Kai, if you say it, now this shit is over. Well, that's <laughs> what I said. That's what I said earlier. You know, you have to respectfully check somebody. You know what I'm saying? You can be. You respectfully disrespectful. That's not a thing, but it's a it's you know, there's ways of getting somebody in line and you don't have to cross the line. Respectfully disrespectful is a yeah, it's just all in the way you package it. That's so it's why not said, what you're saying, it's how you say it. I mean copy, but that's why I said if you too emotional in that situation, you ain't gonna say it the right way because you too emotional. Right. You ain't gonna be able to come up with a rational thought and a way for you to say it. You just going to say it. like, And you just well, saying it. Sometimes you might hit a live nerve. I'm a person though, uh, I believe a man shouldn't move based off of emotion anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you got to gather your thoughts before you approach her because nine times out of ten, a woman is going to come back with emotion regardless. Exactly. Which is why so how many y'all of gonna, a- Y'all going to butt heads if it's both emotion. That's what I'm saying. I'm with you on that now. Cause I ain't the emotional nigga. Like, that's always a thing for me. It was like, I don't have enough, like, emotion as far as your problems. <laughs> like, not saying my wife, because obviously that's your wife, your husband, your problems are my problems type thing. But it's like, I ain't really too emotionally connected to enough things to really give a fuck. And like a lot of people say, like, I don't give a fuck. I genuinely don't. Like, I don't really value the opinion of very many other people enough to care what they think. Or yeah, to but say. when it's a problem, you can't just let that marinate on your mind. You got to go oh, ahead and get that's that why out. I said, that's why I said, though, it's fine for you to take a beat, walk out the room, and, you know, come from a place, like I said, of less emotion as far as the way you're going to attack it. If you say, I ain't saying walk away three months later and then we're going to talk about this shit. We could walk away for an hour. You can go take a ride real quick. And, you know, you get your head together so that you don't come from a place of emotion. Because like Bruce said, when we go have that discussion, she's going to come from a place of emotion because that's just a woman. Right. 90, I ain't even going to say all women. Most women come from a place of emotion. And the way that these yeah, new not, niggas is I, set up, the way that these new niggas is set up, a lot of these dudes come from a place of emotion these days. Say, man. So yeah. if we got two emotional motherfuckers having this, this they, they go from a discussion to an argument instantly like we're not talking it out to come up with a rational situ- uh, rational solution we ended up having a whole conversation where now it's fuck you fuck you and now he's leaving the house and she's mad that she's stuck in here with these two kids like Man, that's what happens though if you just throw it out huh 
I said, damn, we got to leave her with the kid? Come I back. Mean, that's usually... I mean, that's I'll you. take two of them. I'll take, I'll take two of them with me. <laughs> that's always my thing, though. My kids go with me. If I'm leaving, we out. Pack up those sippy cups. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, I'm, and I'm sending you pictures back. We having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, I forgot so about this, too. I forgot about this too in the rundown. Uh, uh, H2H uh, seminars, how to hustle seminars. The seminars are still going right now. They will be going up to December the 5th. Uh, if you missed the live situation with the seminars, you can still be sold to archives of the seminars. Hit me up for the seminars. All right. Um, let me switch this up now a little bit to y'all. Dive a little bit into some shit y'all said on these interviews. Shout out to y'all for the interviews, though. Them interviews was good. Uh, this one we gonna start with Kai. Have you found relationship? Have you found relationship goals yet? Because you said on your interview you haven't seen anything. Yeah, you got a couple of aunts and uncles that's cute, but (laughs) you haven't found anything that you like want to aspire to because you think of coming up with your own solutions, your own situations. Uh, I still feel the same. Nobody's goals for me, you know. I mean, it's motivation. That's cool. I like what y'all got going, but. I don't see me in a lot of people and I don't see my guy in nobody. So, you know, we do our own thing. We rock our own way. So I just feel like whatever we end up being or doing, that's the goal. I don't think nobody else goes on my goals. See, this is why I wholeheartedly agree with you is because I don't believe anybody can be relationship goals for you because you don't know the ins and outs of nobody else's relationship. Right. You know, the surface level of their relationship. Like Bruce said, he got the aunt and the uncle that, been together his whole life and can't keep their hands off of each other and on the surface that's what you see from it but you don't know when they go home and that door closed what the situation is i got an aunt and uncle been together since they was like 12 they're in their 70s now and looking at their relationship and it's like yeah this looks like something that you want to aspire to but at the same time i don't know what the ins and outs of their situation is i have no, i couldn't possibly know that because they got too much time man for me to try to relate or equate my situation to theirs. So when you said yeah. that, Kai, I thought, hmm, I thought it was just me. <laughs> nah, they cute or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that you learned that was bullshit that you was taught as a child? Y'all threw that at Bruce. What did you get taught, <laughs> Kai, that you found out was bullshit? Uh, I don't Damn, Jay, we needed you here too, Jay. I had something for you. Something that I thought, I mean, I was taught as a child that I think is mm-hmm. bullshit. Um, now you got your son, you ain't telling him this goofy shit that they told you. And I'm trying to think, because, you know, they a say lot of a that lot going of shit, on. like I already said. That's why I said they tell you a whole lot of shit. There's a, there's a lot of that going on now, being a parent. Boy. Yeah. Uh Oh. You know, to I'm not necessarily saying um, to just be quiet. You know, I do teach my son to respect his elders or whatnot, but I feel like, you know, kids should be respected too. You can't just talk to people crazy and expect them to accept that because if that's not how nobody else talking to him, you can't talk to him like that either. So I think some bullshit is to just silence kids because they thinking too. You know, you can't teach a kid to be independent, but every time they say something that you don't agree with, they need to shut their ass up. So I think some bullshit is that, you know, all kids need to be quiet when adults say so if it's some adults that ain't got no fucking sense. So they don't need to be talking to the kids no way. But that's what I think. The one thing I would say about that is like, if it's two adults talking, shut the fuck up, mind your business. Oh yeah, you don't get in no adult conversations. I'm saying they talk <laughs> to you, you know. If you feel uncomfortable, I'm not telling you to just, you know, speak your piece. Go find your mama or whatever and let them know the situation, how you feel uncomfortable because you have people who are afraid to speak up for themselves because every time they have ever said something, they've been shut down. So I think it's okay to give a child a voice, you know, to understand that they feel too. That's one of them things I always try to, like, my oldest daughter is eight, and I always try to be like, remember that you was eight. Remember what you was thinking about as an eight-year-old. Like, don't always try to equate your adult uh, perspective on a child. You can't equate your adult perspective on a child because they can't see that. They don't know that. 
Like they don't have that experience. So you got to take also, it back to like when you was in that classroom and shit was going on. Yeah, and I also feel like um, it's okay to give kids high expectations. You know, they should know what to do. And you say, you know better than that. But at, at the same time, you got to understand that that's your expectation you're putting on them. They still a child. Their brain ain't fully mm. developed. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going to mess up. So you can't nail them to the cross every time they do so. At least give them an explanation of, you know, what's going on because they don't always understand because I said something. And I don't have to explain myself. Well, sometimes they need that. So I By feel expectations, like okay. you mean pressure? Yeah. Oh, well. Got the you. problem be people try to, people always try to say that they're protecting their kids from shit. When it's really you protecting you like the child has doesn't again they don't have that perspective they ain't had those life experiences they don't know that shit like you know it like there's one of those things i always go to is when somebody dies people never want to tell their kids the truth about when somebody dies they always want to hide it from them and shelter them from it and then that problem with that becomes that the first time that somebody that they know dies is grandma it's daddy, yeah. it's the uncle who was here every day, it's somebody that was into their immediate life when you could have been getting them off with these practice funerals with your aunt, who they never knew. Yeah. She moved a couple hours away, or moved to, diff to a different city or whatever. It's like, you need to get them there so they know like, oh shit, like this really happens. You don't want it to be a shock to their whole life that now all of a sudden somebody's disappeared. And yeah. You just up and telling me that grandpa was here every day and now he ain't. And you just saying, oh, no, he's in a better place. He's going on and some bullshit. Like, instead of just really telling them what the fuck happened. That's just like jail when they tell them they're going on a vacation. That shit ain't uh, for <laughs> I believe you should tell kids what it is. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to always speak grown-up language to them, but meet them where they at because they deserve to understand, too. You don't want this kid growing up stupid. Basically, this they're going to be socially you don't stupid. Want them you don't, you don't want, want them getting in that. That's what I was about to say. They, if the classroom is going to expose anything that you didn't tell them. That little so, boy sitting next to him <clears throat> uh, at school, and the little girl sitting next to him is going to tell them that ain't what really happened. Like it's either that or they can pull it up on this thing right here. TikTok oh, on yeah. teacher. So hype Yo, when my, you said uh protecting. My daughter had a whole TikTok. Niggas following her and everything. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> So, so hype when you said protecting you as opposed to protecting your kids, you mean like, uh, in terms of things you're not ready yourself to deal with, like to have the conversation, like tough conversation with your kids. Tough conversations. Most people don't really want to have those tough conversations. Uh, you gotta understand once you sign, once you become an adult, life is about doing a bunch of shit that you don't really want to do. Like you gotta go to work. You don't feel like you don't feel like doing. Yeah, because you feeling like you can't really explain it to them. when Because yeah. you're trying to dance around it instead of just keeping it real with them. Instead right. of being honest with them, you're trying to find a way to lie to them is what it right. really is. And it's like, I don't have a lie formulated yet for me to talk to you about this. So my business, stay in the child's place, like to get it in all of that. When if you could have yeah. really just told him, hey, look, your dad did something. He got in trouble. This is what happens when you get in trouble. He got to go away for a couple of years. We can still yeah. write him. He's going to call a couple times a week. We can even go see him, you know, before the Rona. You know, we can go see him and all of that, but he ain't going to be here every day. Like, right. if you explain those situations to them, then that lets them know if you do something wrong and there's consequences for you doing something yeah. wrong. You and think it also teaches kind of... them how to cope because a lot of people are fucked up because they don't know how to cope with stuff. So if you get them an explanation, that helps them have a, a perspective as to what the hell is know. going on. Yeah. And they learn you how to cope with shit as they get older. You think that's lazy parenting? Like being making them sheltering them from the truth? I don't Absolutely. think it's lazy. Lazy parenting, but I don't think it's always healthy because everybody not the same. Some people are okay. You know, they're gonna be okay. But then it's others who needed that understanding and they didn't get it. So I just think it's I situational. think it's, uh... I think it's once you have kids, the kids have to be more important than you. The kids have to come first. Like you have to do what's best for them in all situations at all times. And if you're not giving them the best tools to equip to be, to grow up to be the best teenager, then to grow up to be the best young adult to the adult. Like if you're stunting their growth at all step, all aspects and all steps because at all ages, you never kept it real with them. 
Yeah. And they feel like then once they become an adult, like we're talking about right now, what's the, thing that you, what's the things that you learned that was BS is I learned that my mom and my dad were never keeping it real with me. So like now they questioning everything. Now it's like, well, what was real and what wasn't? Now I had to go out and figure this shit out on my own. And I came up from a place where now you fucked up my whole thought process. My whole view on life has been fucked up. Like some people hit 35 and realize that. Some people hit 45 and realize that. You know what I'm saying? Some people hit 22 and get that. But we had to if do you that. was... Go ahead. We had to do that with my son, my 14-year-old. His mama basically lied to him about some things that had happened in the past with me and her or whatever. And we had to, because he was questioning me about it and me not wanting to be the bad guy and tell him, no, your mama fucked up this. You know what I'm saying? I just took it. But then I was like, I'm telling her, like, bam, like, you got me out here looking stupid. You know what I'm saying? Looking crazy because you not telling the truth. I didn't tell the truth from the damn beginning. You know what I'm saying? So. And if he wasn't ready for that conversation or ready for the truth, you shouldn't have had the whole conversation at all. You know, yeah. I don't feel like you give bits and pieces. Yeah. I didn't want to, you know, he asked me about it. I don't want to throw his mama under the bus. So I'd rather be the bad guy versus her. Bus would have been going 90 miles See, around. in that situation, I, I completely... In that situation, I understand, but this is this is the way I would handle it. Cause you don't tell nobody how to raise their kids. Uh, I don't think you're ready for me to have it. I don't think you're ready for us to have that conversation. Once I feel like you old enough for us to have that conversation, I explain the whole thing to you. Right, but right now, that ain't the, this ain't the thing that we need to go to. Uh, okay, we're gonna lighten it up right now with this one because we got another get a little another deep one, but um. Kai said on uh on her interview again, Kai, I'm on your ass. I see, <laughs> The theme song of your life, the theme song of her life was uh Bruno Mars. Is it still Bruno Mars? Hell no. <laughs> I know it four months ago, so you know things change. I mean, you know, I still got it all. It, it's good <laughs> over here. Maybe it's a different uh sonic <laughs> song. No, because they on people's ass there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my theme song to my life right now is uh get paid, young nigga, get paid. <laughs> RIP <laughs> dog. <laughs> I'm thinking about that. getting that money. That's it. All I'm thinking about is more ways to make money. See, I had more shit from y'all because I know Bruce better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Me and Bruce talk often. So go ahead, Bruce. What's your what's your theme song now? Right now. Uh, Take your ass to sleep. The baby be up too much. <laughs> I hear it. I she just got home. I hear it in the other room. Uh <laughs> yeah, but she was surprised that she sleeps good at night. But uh right now, uh I would say uh Redemption by J Rock featuring Sizzle. Like just trying to make it, man. Trying to get through the tough times, you know what I'm saying? Come out of the dark, into the light. You know, that's a, a lot of people, they don't listen to J-Rock like that, uh, if I just name a song, but look it up. It's a, it's a, that's some shit. The, site, the title alone it should tell you, like, what it's about, Redemption. Ace Hood, hustle, hustle hard. <laughs> Cold <laughs> mouths don't get fed on this boulevard. Big fact. Yeah. I'm, out here, I'm out here getting it from multiple different situations. At least I'm trying to. We know that 45 second intro. I'm trying to stretch that motherfucker <laughs> at least two minutes, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. Hair everywhere. That's what I say. I'll be on my desk moving around. I'll be like, all right, let me get situated. I know I got at least 45 seconds. <laughs> and what I'm saying, it'd be, I'd be, every time I'll be coming back, I'll be having a new joint. When I come back next year, I'm trying to make sure, hey, I got a couple joints that I was talking to the other day, you know, a couple situations I'm trying to tie down. We'll make announcements until they're official, though. All right, here yeah. go the last one from the interviews that y'all did. This one was on Jay interview. What this is why I needed Jay on here for this one. What does the yeah. letter from your child to you say, Bruce? We gonna start with you from that one because y'all asked Jay, uh, y'all asked Jay that about her parents. So what does that letter say from your children to you? I know you have multiple kids, Bruce, so you know, it's a little difficult to sum everybody up in one uh, letter, but you know. What would what would their letter to me be? Yeah. Uh, probably about them being together, you know, that's one thing that it, that's probably the biggest regret of my life. I have several children with several different women, so they're all spread out. We're not under the same roof. 
I bring them together as much as I can. It's hard, you know what I'm saying? Summertime, holidays, things of that nature. But, uh, you know, they're, when I'm not here, they're going to have to collectively get to, hopefully my son as the oldest, he'll, you know, keep everybody together and, you know, in contact and all that stuff or whatever. But that'll probably be it. Like we wish we had more time with each other, you know, some along those lines. I like that. Kai. <clears throat> right now, uh, what will my son let her be to me? Yeah. He want me to be pregnant. He wants oh, wow. a sibling. So his letter will be some BS. I have to go gotta, return to Cinder. Well, he, got <laughs> a bunch of, he got a bunch of them, man. Tell but him he wants what. his mama to have another. Hey, mama, don't you lose those lifestyles. You he was like, you going to do me like that? You just going to leave me in the world by myself like that? God <laughs> <laughs> damn. His son come in throwing all the condoms away. For real. He be on my butt about that. Like, oh, hey, when, when I'm going to have a sibling? I want a sibling that live with me. I want a sister. I want a brother. I'm like, boy, you better move. I mean, I could bring Bree over there for a few hours a day. You know Is that what we go? We could pretend. Yeah. My, daughter used to walk in my daughter used to say that shit until the baby came. <laughs> he gonna be yeah. the same way when I need him to uh watch this baby real quick. You wanted it, not me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I now for me to answer that one, I was like, I don't even fucking know because my kids is eight and one. So the one year old, she ain't gonna have her letter was just say daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love or that. No, with a no bunch of favorite, droplets on it. <laughs> no is her favorite word in the world, and she screams this shit. She got no context for what no means. The answer to everything is no. Did you miss me? No, but she got her arms up wanting me to pick her up. Um, my eight year old now, I don't know, who knows what the hell it's funny. Her name Kai, too. Um, she really, I don't even I don't know what the hell Kai let her would say to me, like, uh, because my daughter is that kid that's like the super emotional child, but she also has been the child who she I took her to her first genetics and she was a couple months old. My man died, and it was like, look. Like I said, get these practice swings out. She don't know him. She has no connection to him. That's my man. It's not her man. <laughs> but um, I don't even know like what that letter would say because she's such an emotional, like I said, child that it would just probably be, be a bunch of like, I love you texts about stuff that we did when she was five or six that I don't even remember. <laughs> like they, they probably ask you for a brother. I mean, that What's wasn't up to me. My, uh, that wasn't up to me. Uh, shout out to my wife. Love you, baby. That's all I was <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shit. Kyle Letter will probably be having fact. All right, that's what it would. I guess it would be a lot about daddy daughter night. My wife used to work like overnight, so she wouldn't be there that night. And I would just say, all right, we're gonna have daddy daughter night. Play games, order a pizza, bake a cake, make some brownies or some shit. Uh, just like try to have an activity that's or something sweet. to do with her. So I would guess it would be a lot about that. Um, I'm look, I'm looking forward to those days. Yeah, until you got dance moms on the TV all the time, and you twirl nah. into a circle. My daughter had frozen decorations in her room from her birthday in January. Them decorations stayed up to like August. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, now unpopular opinions. Unpopular opinions, man. What's going on? We we on another hiatus. Uh, yeah, for the right now, we got some things lined up, though. We'll be back in the lab soon. You know, the ladies, uh, they working on some career things right now. So get that situated. And Trying to get once, paid. Once they get their, they getting their money Child and they in. get, get comfortable <laughs> and find some time, we, we be back to it. Copy that. Like I said, I be, you know I'm saying, I was tapped in. I'm trying to make sure, you know what I'm saying, I'm staying locked in with the situation. I'm looking I wanna, like, okay, last time I had I, Bruce on, he told me we back at it. Yeah, we, we was uh, back for a little bit, but you yeah, know. Yeah, we came back. I'm ready, though. I done did what I need to do. Yeah, Kai, uh, I mean, uh, Jay, she she got some big things on the horizon, man, so most definitely yeah. supporting her in that. Shout out uh, to Jay. Big shout out to definitely. Jay. Hey, Jay, we got to get you on, man. We got to get you on, Jay. Yeah, she's definitely the Beyonce of the group. I was. I want to say this though, man. I want to give everybody talk about giving folks their flowers. I want to give hype his flowers, man. I respect what you're doing. You're only 43 episodes in, but I know what you did. 
with OTF and all that. Uh, I respect OLF, it, bro. Yeah. Shout out to the game. Yeah. OLF, my bad. So, you know, I respect it, man. Y'all, you doing your thing, man. You're a one-man wrecking crew. Uh, your conversations that you have every episode is some real shit. It ain't no fluff. It ain't no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I respect it. Conversations that black folks, especially black men, need to be having. So keep buying, bro. Keep pie, keep hiding, man. I'm, I respect it. You gotta always got my support, bro. I appreciate that. You already know. Every Monday morning, you drop that link is dropped to you on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But, uh, I definitely, you know what I'm saying, I definitely appreciate that. It's always good to hear good shit from people. Also, damn, like I told you, I got a lot of shit going on. I can't keep up with all my own shit. Wristbands are available. The wristbands are available <laughs> for purchase. Two dollars a shot or free with any order from Custom Hustle jerseys. <laughs> Hustle, the hustle is unmatched, man. I tell you that. Yeah. Hey, man, you already know. You know what I'm saying, what did the joint say? This is how you hustle. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, last joint I'm gonna throw at y'all before we go, Bruce. What's the craziest shit Kai ever said on the podcast? Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that stick out, though, it wasn't crazy. It was just funny as hell when she was doing the, uh, when we was talking about uh, Jay's favorite subject, Destiny's Child, Beyonce, anything related to them. And when Jay Kai Anson started doing her, uh, when Kai started <laughs> doing her Michelle impression, that shit was hilarious as fuck to me. Like, that's one of the episodes I remember vividly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for sure. All right. And now, because we're going to keep Jay alive, Kai, what's the craziest shit Jay said on the podcast? Man, she said something about going to hell. She was going to hell. I can't remember. I remember. I, remember. I, know I, think, what, we was, I think we was live doing that one. Yeah, we was over here, and it was something that they, those uh, the ISUPK dudes said to her something about singing a song. And she was, they was like, don't say that, that's the devil or something. And she was like, well, I'm going to hell. <laughs> it was something crazy, she said, but we was dying. I, I know the, the craziest thing she did, she got, we was talking about something and she got up and she started swag surfing in the middle of the- Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank God for video. Cause that shit go live forever. That shit was fun. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what episode it was or what we was talking about, but. That was fun. That's the one thing I always say. I'd rather have a video than a picture because the video you go, the video is always going to be way better than the picture. You get to see this motherfucker moving around and all of that. You can pull this joint up and play it at somebody's funeral. Still shot some pictures at the joint. It's just, oh, yeah, look. <laughs> yeah. And Bruce funeral, I'm playing when he said RIP to his cousin Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> some of that nigga yeah. still owe him some money. <laughs> Hey, real talk though, who does that roll over to? Is that my aunt or my uncle? Like, who do I get that from? Hey, uh, before we go, my uncle on his deathbed, Eagles Cowboys played Monday night football. I go to the hospital, I say, Uncle, where my money at? Y'all lost last night. He mustered up the strength to give me one of these. As he should. Shout out to Hunk. Um, that's funny. That's episode 43, though, yo. Unpopular opinions. I appreciate y'all coming on. Shouts out Thank to Dallas, Texas. Her. We Most definitely, uh, man. appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>